On this episode of TTY Weekly, WEP or WPA, Stream Ciphers, RC4, AES, and TKIP. Learn everything about your wireless network and how to make it more secure. Way Weekly, I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka is that access, and yes, me, call me that, and of course, you can always send me your questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories at ask at tqaweekly.com. The show notes for this episode are going to be at tqaweekly.com slash se3ep06. Of course, we want our networks to remain secure, and we have various choices when we're actually selecting the security of our wireless network, WEP, WPA, WPA2, you got TKIP, RC4, AES, but which is more secure? Well, I'm gonna get into that today. And at the very end, I'll be giving you possible attack scenarios that intruders may try on these various technologies. So be sure to listen to the end. So we're gonna start off with WEP, which is the RC4 standard for encrypting the traffic using a stream cipher. So WEP, was released in September of 1999 to allow wireless devices such as laptops the ability to have the same security as anybody on a wired network. You may recognize this by the 10 or 26 character hexadecimal pin and is also the most commonly suggested choice for internet wireless security on most routers even up to this day. RC4 is a cryptographic stream cipher known as ARC4 and ARC4 all spelled out, and is the most widely used software-based stream cipher in protocols such as SSL. So it is possible to implement this securely. What's wrong with the RC4 standard implemented into WEP is the fact that it's only 24 bits long, also allows for the beginning of the output key stream to be published, which means that it is possible on a high, high traffic network to actually sniff out enough keys that you could actually get all the information you need to crack into the network. So we're talking about more than 5,000 packets because after 5,000 packets, it's a one in two chance that you have a repeating key, which makes it extremely dangerous for WEP. It had to be replaced four years later by WPA using TKIP or the Temporal Key Integrity Protocol because it was compatible with most of the network cards using WEP because it also allowed for a viable link layer security method. So what happens is in 2003, all the network cards in the computers or almost all of them were able to have a firmware update capable of upgrading them from WEP to a WPA using TKIP. The routers weren't able to, you had to upgrade your router if it was pre 2003 at that time. This allows you for a better, more secure connection that is harder for intruders to gain access to. Unfortunately, this was only a temporary fix because they were awaiting WPA2 using an AES stream cipher, which by the way, AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, was actually created by two Belgian cryptographers named Joan Damon and Vincent Bridgman which I'm pretty sure I screwed up your name, but sorry. And it also, by the way, supersedes the previous 1997 standard DES, data encryption standard, which was previously used by the governments of the United States and other governments. AES in its implementation on your wireless network, as well as RC4 and TKIP are all symmetric key algorithms. And you have two different types of security. You have symmetric and asymmetric. Asymmetric uses a private and public key. I'll get to that in a different episode. Asymmetric, uh, symmetric means that it uses the same password to encode and decode your traffic. Meaning the longer your password, the harder it is to guess, the less likely they're gonna get get into your network. So knowing all this, in order to maximize the security of your network, which is more secure? WEP or WPA? And the answer is neither. 
you need to be using WPA2 with an AES stream cipher, a really long password. And if you listen to last week's episode, turn off UPnP, WPS if at all possible, or upgrade the firmware to something like Tomato or get a new router that you can or get an Apple Airport. Basically get anything that has the ability to turn off WPS. And of course, change the default password and turn off remote access to your router. Doing this will lock it down enough that you do not have that many chances of any issues. It will be complicated enough that intruders may not be interested by your network if other networks that are weaker are nearby. So I said I'm gonna be talking about two possible attack vectors. First one is on web. So the first one is the fact that we have to re remain conscious of the fact that WEP, using the right sniffing technology and hardware, we can sniff WEP traffic from over a mile away. Because of the 24-bit length of the keys, it is possible to gain enough data long range to sniff enough of the traffic to figure out what the traffic is. It is possible at this point to connect to the network of course, you're going to have to get closer to do that, but it is possible to connect to the network and then at this point, in the other person's name, force a password reset on their favorite accounts of Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, or whatever, any accounts that connect to other accounts, and at this point, overtake the person's identity, basically stealing a bunch of information. This is besides the fact that they now have access to your network and they can see all your financial information by doing very simple man in the middle attacks. So by doing all this, you're completely compromised. The only viable local attack vector against WPA and WPA2 is the WPS weakness, unless you're using a weak password and severely limits the distance and the time it takes to actually break in. WEP can be broken in under 60 seconds. It may take you as long as 46 hours to crack WPS if you don't blow the router in the first place or it doesn't lock down. And of course, because of the fact that you can always lock it down by either changing router, switching your firmware, turning it off, that attack vector can be completely wiped out of existence. So if you're using WPA2, with an AES stream cipher, a really long password, no UPnP, no WPS, and you turn off remote access to your router, you'll be a lot safer. Next week, I'll be giving you a guided tour of the brand new Ubuntu 12.10 operating system and many of its new features and tools. And if anything in this episode interests you, any of this stuff at all, Cypher stream, symmetric and asymmetric, RC4, TKIP, AES, any of that, just write me down below on YouTube, email me at ask.tqaweekly.com or on the show notes page on my website in the comments box below the show notes and I will get to that episode at your wish. Of course, remember to like this episode if you're interested in what I'm talking about it, share if you think somebody else could benefit from this topic and subscribe if you wish to learn more for the show notes of this episode and others more information on other ways to subscribe to the show or to subscribe to our weekly newsletter and how to participate by submitting your questions comments suggestions and or stories head over to tqaweekly.com stay safe and online have a great day goodbye